okay, how, how do we look at it? What do we look for? What are the signs? You know, because sealed system service is probably one of the last things you want to do on a refrigerator because it requires you to bring in a bunch of sealed system tools, gauges, vacuum pump, recovery machine, freon torches, the whole nine yards. So what we want to do is we want to have a system that we, we can check this, check this, check that. Okay, we've checked everything we could. It's definitely a sealed system. Now we have to do a sealed system repair. So uh, we're going to start off here and then we'll get into a little bit about the sealed system tools and everything else in the other parts of the videos and why do we use this and what do we do first, what do we do second and in like a, a, a sequential order. Um, so how to check a refrigerator to determine if it needs sealed system repairs. Customers going to call out and say my refrigerator is not cooling at all or it's not cooling properly. And not cooling properly could mean many different things. It could mean that the freezer's cooling, but the fridge is not. Like we have stuff freezing in the freezer and not in the refrigerator, uh, not getting cold in the fridge. Um, one second, this door's not closing up. Yeah, it can be a problem too. Hey, what? The gasket could be a problem too. Yes, it could be a problem, yes. Um, pause it for a second. So in, in, in order to troubleshoot whether a refrigerator is electrical, mechanical, or sealed system problem is to know how the refrigerator works. The basic, we're not gonna talk about dual evaporators right now and dual compressor systems and all this complicated stuff. We're gonna talk about a simple refrigerator it has a simple refrigeration system. It has one evaporator and one compressor, and it uses a fan to circulate the air throughout the box. Now we got two different types of refrigerators here. Um, the first one is a top freezer, okay? It's where the freezer's in the top. In most refrigerators, the sealed system is in the freezer. And what I mean by that is you have an evaporator where all the cooling is done in the box. The evaporator is absorbing the heat and it's doing all the cooling. There's no refrigerant system in the refrigerator section at all. Okay, so the compressor being down here and the condenser down here, it pumps the freon up to this and then it comes back down and that's your refrigerant system. Okay, so all the cooling on this particular box is done by the top up here. We're gonna open them up and take a look and talk about what we see here and everything else. Now, on a bottom mount refrigerator, if you ever noticed the freezer being on the bottom, we call this top mount. We, when we talk about a refrigerator, we say top mount, bottom mount. We use these words you're probably not familiar with. We're talking about where the freezer is located on the unit. So this would be top mount because the freezer's in the top. This is the bottom mount with freezers on the bottom. Basically, this unit here is that refrigerator upside down. So when we got a bottom mount unit, and you could call it a French door because the two doors open like this. A man that had a refrigerator like this that was one big door, and it opened up and the freezer was on the bottom 20 plus years ago before French doors were real popular. So, the evaporator now would be where? I'm going to say A, B, or C. Where would the evaporator be on this particular unit? C. It'd be in C. It'd be in the bottom here. So instead of it being on the top, they put it down there. So our compressor is in the back in the bottom, the condenser is here, and we pipe the Freon here and back, just like that. But now all the cooling is done on the bottom of the unit. Okay. Now, in these refrigerator and freezer sections, we have to have different temperatures, okay? And in order to troubleshoot, we need to know what those temperatures are. We wanna know how does the air flow throughout the box. We need to know all these little things before we can get into, oh, well, sealed system, you just look at the evaporator, you look at this, you look at that. Why do I go straight to the evaporator? Why don't I check other things, okay? So in these boxes, we have the evaporators in a different section. Let's go to uh, another screen here. Let's talk about a top mount. 
So we have a little separator in the middle and the evaporator is located in the back here. All right. The unit has a fan on the very top. What do we call that fan? Anybody know what that fan is called? The evaporator fan. Why is it called the evaporator fan? Um, because it, it, the air goes, controls the whole refrigerator or something like that. Yeah, but what's that tubing right there? That's the coil. Yeah, but what, what's the name of that coil? Evaporator coil. Evaporator. It's an evaporator. Yeah. So the evaporator cools the, the, cools the very Yeah, but that's yeah. in the freezer. And the fan that circulates it is called the evaporator fan. So this here is the evaporator. So this one here is the evaporator fan. So there's a panel here. And it's got some openings on the very, very bottom of it. Let me see if this one has it. If you look at the bottom of this in freezer here, you can see these vent holes on the bottom of this unit. The fan is located back here. We're going to open it up and look at it in a few minutes. But it pulls air into those fins over the evaporator, and then the fan blows it back out here. And that air circulates around inside the freezer section, cooling the freezer. So the air comes in, and I'll use a different color to try to assimilate the airflow. So the air flows in here through these vents, goes up over the coils, and then the fan blows it back out into the freezer. And then it circulates right back around inside the freezer. Just a simple fan circulating the air. This is the freezer section. Now the tubing of the evaporator runs at minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Give or take a few degrees, but it's 15 degrees below zero. That's really, really cold. So as the air is flowing over there, it goes over the evaporator. The evaporator is absorbing the heat from the air and then blowing that cooler air into the box and circulating it. What is the temperature in the freezer that we should try to achieve? 38. 35. Not 35. 32. What's, 32. It's a freezer. Um, below zero. Below. Not below zero. About zero degrees. Uh -huh. About zero to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so a freezer temperature. should be between zero and 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That is average temperature, depending on the setting of the customer's choice. At 32 degrees is when water and the food and everything will freeze, but if you store meat at 30 degrees, it'll be frozen, but it won't last that long. Believe it or not, storing it at colder temperatures extends the lifespan of the food inside the freezer. Even if it's frozen, people think at 30 degrees, well, it's frozen, it's gonna last for a long time. Believe it or not, <coughs> it lasts longer at colder temperatures. You know, what, what do you used to call those freezers that were just freezers where you lift Deep the lid freezer. up or reach in? What do they call them? Ice boxes. Deep, Deep freeze. Deep freeze. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they get colder than a freezer, okay? They might get 10 degrees below zero, okay? Um, when you open up this door, what happens to the cold air? Cold it down. Falls down. down. Think, of, think of the cold air inside this box as if it's water. If I filled this whole section up with water and opened up the door, what would happen to the water? It'll come out. It'd pour out, but as it pours out, what's going to happen? It empties out. Yeah, but air goes in. warm air is going to come in. Okay, so if you're checking a refrigerator or freezer and you want to check the, the box for temperature, as soon as you open the door, all the cold air inside of there stored is just going to rush right out. So if you're going to use something like a pocket thermometer or digit, they have digital pocket thermometers, 
or they actually have multimeters with a temperature sensor mm -hmm. and you're going to go like this and check the temperature well you can't just open up the door check the temperature and then come back and say aha this is my temperature you're going to have to let it sit for a while for that air in there to get back down to temperature okay so how do we take the temperature we'll get to that in a minute okay so this is the air circulation but that's the freezer we haven't talked about the refrigerator. Well, how does the refrigerator get cold? Anybody know? Air circulates from up there down inside there. Okay, so what what controls that? The fan. Uh, uh, the coils. You the have vents inside the refrigerator that it comes from up top in the freezer. Okay, you know what those vents are called? No, I'll be lying to you. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> just, so, in front of this panel, there's a channel here. And it's mounted to the very, very front of that back panel. We'll point it out. So, some of that air from the freezer goes here, but the fan blows air down through this channel. And there's a hole right here between the refrigerator and the freezer. So, that air can come down and goes through and comes out here. So it goes through this separator here. They call it a divider, they call it a separator, they call it a mullion separator, but that separates the freezer from the fridge. Remember, we gotta be different temperatures. What temperature should our refrigerator be? 38, 37, 30, 35. About 34 to 38, 39 degrees. You don't wanna be much warmer than 38 again. Uh, temperature really has a big effect on how long the food is stored and stays in the, in the refrigerator. But we have to have airflow in. But there's a problem to my drawing. I'm showing the air coming in, but is that going to work? Uh, yes, because you have a big air coming in at the bottom, in the front of your, or the front of your refrigerator. On the bottom, uh, here's the front of my refrigerator. What are you in talking about? In the front, it's down to down the base. There? Yes. That's for the condenser. Oh. That's not inside the refrigerator. Okay. Well, inside the refrigerator, there's usually one or two small holes behind the back panel where the customer can't see. Those are return holes. Those return holes, as the air comes in and floats down, and before I go any further about the air circulation, we got hot air and we got cold air. What's the difference between the two and what, what they do? Like if they're in a room, where does cold air go? And where does hot air go? Hot air comes in and cold air circulates. Back. We're removing the hot air from the refrigerator. A, a hot air balloon, when I put heat to the air in the balloon, what happens to the balloon? It expands. The balloon rises. But if I turn the heat off to the air, what's going to happen? It goes down. It comes down. So when air is heated, air actually expands and becomes lighter than cold air. When you make air colder, it's usually the moisture in the air too. It gets denser and it's heavier than hot air. So when the cold air from the freezer blows down into the box, where's it going to go? It's going to go towards the bottom of the fridge. Okay, the hot air in the fridge is going to rise up here and it's going to come up through these returns and go over the coils here and then come back down again. But here's, here's the thing though, we got a little problem. We got the same fan and the same evaporator <coughs> cooling the freezer section that's cooling the fridge section. So how do we keep them two different temperatures? How do we got zero to 15 degrees up here and we have, you know, 34, 36, 38 degrees in the bottom? How do we separate the two temperatures in the box? You have temperature control for how much air you bring into the bottom from the top. Okay, do you remember what that part is called? It starts with a D. Damper? Yeah. It's a damper, very good. So where this air comes in here inside the refrigerator section has a window or a door. It's a little flap. 
some of the cheaper refrigerators, I don't use the word cheap, some of the lesser expensive refrigerators have a mechanical damper. In other words, a customer can set that damper to a specific setting and it don't move. It just, like a window, if it, if it was warm in here and it was snowing outside, what would you do? You would crack open a window a little bit to let some of that cold air in. And that's what a damper does. A damper allows a little bit of that air coming in. It controls how fast the air from the fan can actually come into this box. Okay? So that's how we get the airflow control, but it still doesn't explain how do we control the temperature. The temperature is controlled in the refrigerator on this particular model. So what we do, and I'll use a different color to, to show it, here we have a thermostat control right here and it senses the temperature of the air. When that thermostat reaches temperature, refrigerator shuts off. It's a simple circuit like this. You have a little thermostat and it goes to the compressor and I'm not doing the whole schematic just basically Evaporator fan, EF, condenser fan, CF, and compressor. When that thermostat says temperature is good, it's going to open up and shut all three of those parts off. But here's the problem. Well, that thermostat set for what temperature? Uh, 34 to 38 degrees. Why? Because it's in the refrigerator. So when this refrigerator's uh, 34 degrees, that thermostat's going to shut off, but how are you going to control the temperature in the fridge? There is no thermostat. There is no part that turns the compressor on and off in the freezer. The only thing we have in a freezer is a fan circulating that cold air around. But if I want the freezer colder, the damper, I make it the opening very, very small so that the air coming here takes a long time to fill this bottom half up. Thermostat down there has got to wait till we get to the temperature and then it'll shut it off. That'll make my freezer colder. If I don't want my freezer that cold, I open the damper up and I let the cold air come in really fast. And the thermostat's going to shut it off sooner. So by opening the damper up, I can change the way the air flow is into the box. So let's go ahead and let's take this out. Let's take a look at these parts inside of here. Give me a moment. So on this particular unit, we have our thermostatic control here. And So, if we remove this compartment out, this here are our, our controls. This is the thermostat right here, and I'll show you guys. This is the thermostat, and this is what we call our defrost timer. We're not going to get into defrost circuits. I have videos about that. You guys can always check that out. But this is this, this is that. This is our airflow here into the refrigerator. Our damper is not here, our damper is in the freezer section. Let me go ahead and open that up now. So this is the cover for the evaporator. These coils 
here are the evaporator. Notice the styrofoam on either side of the evaporator there, these pieces in the, in the back here. They're very important. If you're ever doing service, we have to make sure that that styrofoam is installed properly on both sides of these coils because when the fan's running, we want the air to flow over the coils and not around the outside of the coils. So we want to flow them in and over the coils. We want to have proper air circulation on this unit to, to make sure that it's cooling properly. If the air goes around the evaporator, it's not going to cool down. Now our vent, we have one in the front here. I don't know if you guys, let me get a, a stick or something here. I, I got something. See if you guys can see it come out. There is an opening right here. Can you see this piece come out the, the bottom there? So this is the supply air. This is the air that's feeding the refrigerator section from the freezer. So as this fan's blowing, it's got vents on the side here which blow out to the freezer. But you see the channel down here. This channel is going to the refrigerator section. Channel right here. So the fan's blowing air here and it's going down into the refrigerator section. Now if you look at this thing here, it says temperature, colder and cold. Are we talking about the freezer or the refrigerator? Refrigerator because that's the, like your damper. Yes and no, or no and yes. It is the damper, but this is the freezer temperature. Uh -huh. Okay, so if I put this as colder, it closes here, and I'll pull it out so you guys can see it better in a minute. When I drop it down to cold, it opens it wide up so the air goes into the refrigerator real fast. So my freezer is not as cold. Okay, so we have this piece here. Um, let me see if I can. All right, so here you can see the face of the fan. Mm -hmm. And the fan is blowing out. Now, per my drawing, the airflow over the evaporator is a negative airflow, like it's pulling the air. It's not blowing it on top of the coils. It's pulling the air through the coils, OK? And here is where the fan's blowing. It's blowing against this plastic housing there. So some of the air coming out these holes here on the side. And that's for the freezer. But the rest of the air is coming down here into the refrigerator section. Now if I slide this up or down, when it's down, look at how much opening I have here on the sides of this damper. When I slide it up, look how it blocks almost completely here. Mm -hmm. Never 100% blocks the airflow. Okay, but because the air can still go right here, but it does restrict how fast the air can come down versus here. So if you see, it's colder when it's up, right? Is that what it says? Colder here? So when it goes up, it's blocking the air so it doesn't go to the fridge that fast. It takes a long time for this part here in the bottom of the fridge to see how cold it is. So the compressor is going to run longer. Because when you make a refrigerator warmer or colder, all it is is how much longer does the compressor and the fans run? They run longer. Like I turn the AC on in this room. If I turn it on where it never shuts off, it'd be like a meat market in here. I could hang meat, it's so cold. But if I had a refrigerator, if, if I had it cycle on and off, I could control at what temperature it shuts off and what temperature it comes back on. So airflow is very important. If someone blocks the airflow in this unit, that it will not cool properly. So this was the supply in the front. There's another hole in the back. Can you see it there? Now, Carl, maybe if you can take the camera off for a second. So you guys can see the video later. There's two holes down here. And if I can film here, there's two holes. There's one hole in the front and one hole in the back. 
The hole in the front is the air coming into the fridge, and the hole in the back is the air returning into the fridge. So when I'm done, you guys can all come check them out, okay? So, I think it's still recording. So, if we look, this is a very weird design. Look at the, the, the styrofoam in here, okay? When it blows down, air comes into the refrigerator in the back, but then these two holes are the return air back up, right in the same position. Not all refrigerators do that because the supply and the return are in the same airflow area. If any of those vent holes are blocked, you're not gonna get cooling. Yesterday, uh, Carl, remember we were working on the, on the AC yesterday, and what happened when we put a piece of paper in front of the evaporator? It, it wasn't cooling. It didn't cool, it blocked the airflow. Yeah. Okay, so if you block any of these air openings, okay, you're gonna lose cooling. So you might see sometimes the door's not closing or sealing properly, and ice builds up inside this duct. So your freezer will be cold, but your refrigerator won't be cold. You're not gonna get the cold air down into the bottom of your box. So the airflow is very important for proper cooling on this unit, okay? So that's air circulation, where we, we circulate the air around the freezer, we circulate the air around the fridge to properly cool those two components. But we need to talk about what do we look for and, and how do we check it out. I'm just gonna plug this back in for a second. but it's okay, it took itself out. Fans on, okay? When we're cooling and the thermostat's calling for cooling, when our thermostat's closed, what three parts are supposed to run? Evaporator fan, condenser fan, condenser fan, and compressor. So when we're troubleshooting a refrigerator, those three components are all controlled by that one thermostat. So if one of them are working, like this evaporator fan here, if that fan's working, we want to go to the back of the unit and see if what's working. Compressor. compressor and the condenser fan. Condenser fan. So we're going to turn this around now. So back here, we have the condenser fan. And it's a little hard for you guys to see it running. I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it real quick. And you can see the fan slowing down. Mm -hmm. So it was running so fast and, and plastic is painted white, it's a little bit hard for you guys to see. That's the condenser fan. And right next to the condenser, we have the compressor. Now I'm looking and we don't even have the relay plugged in, so that's really not going to help. Let's see if I can. Can't do it from this angle. So we'll look at it in a minute. So when the evaporator fan's running, condenser fan's running, the compressor should be running too. So you gotta be careful when you're sticking your hand down in here, you should be wearing your safety gloves and everything because there are electrical wires and moving parts down here. So you wanna just shove your hand in there. But you wanna know if the compressor itself is running, okay? If this compressor is not running and the fans are working, now we gotta go to our compressor and find out why the compressor is not working. Would that be a problem with the thermostat? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. If that fan's working, if that fan's working, if we look at this uh, 
diagram, that's condenser fan is working. If I go like this, condenser fan's working. Mm -hmm. We saw the freezer fan working, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, could that be a problem with thermostat? No, because those two fans need that thermostat to be good. If that fan's working, I'm not worried about the thermostat inside the box. So, what one part do I not highlight right now? What part did I Compressor. highlight? Compressor. So my problem is at the compressor. Uh, I told you it wasn't connected, but I'll go ahead and connect it in a minute. But the point is, is that when we walked up to it, there are things like door gaskets not sealing, airflow problems, and everything else. But we need to know, what do we do first? We check to make sure the doors are closing. We check to see what's cold. Because if the top is cold and the customer has ice and the refrigerator is not cold, is my compressor working? No? No. If the customer has ice in the freezer, you got to have the compressor not working. How are you going to have ice if the compressor is not working? Okay, so remember I said at the very beginning, is the top cooling and the bottom not, or is it not cooling at all? If you have ice in the freezer, most likely these parts are running. It doesn't mean we have them running properly, but in order to have ice, your compressor needs to work. If that compressor don't work, everything's room temperature. Everything's not cooling. So we need to check these things out. So in this case here, nothing was cooling. Freezer was warm, refrigerator's warm. I went to the freezer, I saw that the fan was running. I go in the back, I saw the compressors running. Just by looking at those parts, I know that my thermostat is good. It's not the thermostat. And I didn't draw it in there, but that defrost timer I showed you earlier is also in this circuit. And a defrost timer is good. Because if the defrost timer was bad, those fans wouldn't work either. So I know my problem's with the compressor. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the refrigerator. Let me see if I can connect that relay on there. Compressor's not, someone put it in, didn't even bolt it down. So. I hear you from you. You heard it running? And yeah, it is running. Okay, so I can feel the compressor running. You heard it kick on. Does that mean it's cooling if the compressor's running? Mm -hmm. So what are things that I can check right now if I see that the fans and the compressor are running? What's one of the first things you want to check? Now the process stub is where the valve is on that compressor down there. This valve right here. Mm -hmm. Refrigerators don't come with a process stub. Someone did work on that unit. Okay? You would not have a valve on a refrigerator for you to connect gauges and check gauges right now. So the only thing you have is your eyes, your ears, your nose, your hands, and maybe a digital meter. Because other than that, other than those devices or, or, or whatever don't do you good, now you're going to have to put gauges on the system and check Freon. Okay? But the discharge line, where does the discharge line go to? What part does it go to? Anybody know? Gerald? Carl? Discharge line goes where? 
Close to what part? Is that way of C or that way of C? I don't know. That is the compressor. The discharge line is part of the compressor. Capillary tube. It goes to your condenser. Yes. And then that goes up to your evaporator. Okay, so when I go to a unit and I'm seeing these fans are working or not working, then I see my compressor's working, but I'm not getting cooling. One of the first things I want to check is I want to check my discharge line. The Freon is flowing out the discharge line and coming back on the suction line. Okay, so I want to feel the discharge line and I want to feel the condenser. So I want to come right here and the discharge line it's this small black line here, and it goes to my compressor, I mean condenser. So the compressor is pumping here to here. So what is this line here? So, um, suction. Suction line. Mm -hmm. This is the Freon coming back. Now right now, this should be high pressure. In Freon, high pressure, it means high temperature. So in this case, this discharge line is coming in here, and then this line is going up to the box and ends up going to the evaporator, and then the suction line comes back down here into the compressor, okay? I'm feeling this pipe right now in this condenser, it's room temperature, room temperature. It should be cold or it should be hot? Should be hot. Well, the condenser is high pressure. So it should be hot. Yeah, so I will tell you this, the condenser is between 125 PSI to 150. Now 150 is a little high because this is a force draft condenser where the fan is blowing over the condenser. So with the fan blowing over it, it's going to run a little bit cooler than we call static or warm wall where the condenser is on the back wall of the fridge with no fan or inside the wall. This one is force draft. So this thing here should be running about 125 to 150 PSI. So let's take a look at something. Let me, uh, I can't see the refrigerator's in my way. Let me just search for EPA here. This is my temperature pressure chart here. Refrigerant files temperature and pressure. And we're using 134A as the type of gas inside a refrigerator. This line over here is temperature. Okay? Now I said the pressure should be about 125 to 150. I say this one here is closer to the 125 PSI pressure. So we went 134A, which is right here, and we went down, these are pressures. Now, because they're in brackets, that's a vacuum, that's below zero. That's not a positive pressure. Our pressures start right about here at about minus 15 degrees. So we're talking about 150 or 125 PSI. We're gonna go all the way down here to 124.3, which is close to it. What is the temperature? 100 degrees. What temperature is a house or a room normally? 75. 75, 80 degrees. So if I touch the condenser, should I be able to feel if it's warm or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's 100 degrees. It's not going to burn me, but it's going to be hot. So if it was 150 PSI, it might be between 100 and 110 degrees. So I can feel the temperature of the condenser here and the line to the condenser, and if they're hot, I know I have positive pressure. I know my compressor's pumping, and I have to continue to check for more problems. Now right now, I want you guys to come feel the condenser and tell me what you think. Pause it. All right, so 
feel in a condenser, you can feel that it's room temperature. But according to the compressor, you can feel it vibrating. You know the compressor is working. So what couple of things can we conclude if the compressor is running, but the condenser is cold? Condenser is room temperature. No freon. No or low freon. Because that can be so low, it does, it's not enough to really raise the pressure too much on the condenser. It's not going to be warm. What else could be wrong? What? Well, a leak would cause no or low freon, right? So, yeah, a leak is part of that, but what else? An inefficient compressor. A compressor has a pump inside and has valves. And if the valves are bad or the piston's bad, like in some of the LG refrigerators, if you go online YouTube, I think in one of my videos I showed it, that I, they, some people took a LG compressor completely apart and the top of the piston of the compressor had a hole in it. Like the compressor piston broke. So the piston's going up and down, but it has a hole in it, so it's not going to create pressure. That's an inefficient compressor. It's running and trying to do its job, but it's not pumping. One last thing. What else could it be? A restriction. Very good. A restriction. Could be a restriction, and it's usually in the capillary tube. That's the tube that separates the compressor and the condenser. Freon is flowing this way, this way through the capillary tube. But the capillary tube is so small. This is the capillary tube here. Look how small this capillary tube is compared to the suction line. Capillary tube is so small, oil from the compressor, if the compressor ran hot, the condenser coils were dirty. So even though the fans running didn't cool it down, People might have it in the garage and the sun's beating down on it, can't get rid of enough heat. Condenser fan can go bad, cause it to run excessively hot. That would cause oil from the compressor to flow more freely with the Freon. A little bit of oil always flows with the Freon, a little bit. But if it puts excessive oil in there, oil doesn't flow that easy. And if you get oil inside this capillary tube, look how small it is here. Inside the tube, it's even smaller. And just a couple of drops of oil inside that tube will restrict the flow and we'll let it flow through. So when we have this type of unit not cooling and the condenser is room temperature, then we gotta look for these things here. Little or no freon, inefficient compressor, and restriction. But at this point, it's a sealed system repair. We check to make sure that the doors were closing. Even if a door does not close, if refrigerator door don't close, freezer's still gonna get freezing cold, okay? If the freezer door don't close, you're gonna excessive warm air inside, back there where the fan is, you're gonna start building up frost. So you'll have some cooling, but you'll see ice build up wherever that warm, humid air is coming in and hitting that cold air from the freezer. Okay, but you'll have somewhat cooling going on. Not much. Probably won't even have freezing if the freezer door or the gasket's not sealing or the door's not closing. But if you run into these coils here are room temperature and this is running, we have a sealed system problem. At that point, we need to bring our tools out. We need to test. So far, any questions on this? No? Uh, I have a question, but I don't, this is not in relation to this. Okay, but ask your question. Uh, my question would be, um, <clears throat> the way um, that system is working, would that be the same as a low chiller system? A chiller? Uh, yeah, but a chiller, the evaporator is usually submerged in water. You cannot see it. Mm -hmm. And 
not all chillers are water-cooled condensers, but the condenser itself is also submerged in water. And the only way you can check like condenser temperature is to know the temperature of the water, okay? Now, a lot of these units, and the one we looked at when we went over there, I don't know if you remember, the evaporator had a thermometer on the water flow line. Mm -hmm. And if I can know the temperature of the water, I can still use the temperature to estimate pressure. So on a chiller, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's still a refrigeration system, but chillers have water flow systems instead of air flow systems. Now, one of the things I would also say before we go into this system, one, we want to look at the compressor and the condenser and see if the condenser had some heat build up, okay? But the other thing we want to look at even though I took this fan out, the compressor and the condenser fan are still running. All I did was disconnect, oops, disconnect this evaporator fan. These two parts are connected, the thermostat's still connected. If you listen, you can still hear it humming, okay? So when you are also looking at a sealed system problem, you wanna look and listen here Part and see if you see a frost pattern here. You start to see frost build up on the coils. Guys, come here and listen. Come over here and listen. Feel the two lines the, the line with capillary tube and the, and the other line, which is a suction line. Listen closely. You hear something like water running? Mm -hmm. Guys, come take, take a look. Feel the two lines up there, the, the, not the capillary, but this line here and that line. Can you feel a little bit of the cooling? Mm -hmm. yeah. Feel those two lines? Do you see any frost building up on those coils? Yeah. You see frost? Where do you see frost? The freon's coming in here. Do you see any frost? No, no, no. no, no frost at no. all. Like go in there and feel it. You feel the other line? Okay. So there's a slight temperature difference, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's no frost pattern at all. Mm -hmm. But did you hear the noise? Yeah. What did the noise sound like? Freon flowing through the like something flowing. Yeah, it, it, it is the Freon flowing through, but it almost sounds like a water pipe in your house carrying mm -hmm. water. Now, if you didn't hear it when I'm done, you can come up and listen to it again. But that means my compressor's pumping something, okay? I'm looking, what's happening in this box? What's happening on these coils? What's happening on the condenser? What's happening on the compressor? I have not put any tools except for to open up the panel to get to them to say, do I have a sealed system problem? I'm not putting a meter to it and saying, do I have voltage? You know, electrical problem is I don't see the two fans running. I don't see the compressor running. Now we gotta stop and say, okay, we got an electrical problem, okay? But I see my fans working. I know my compressor's working. I feel it, I hear it running. I come here and I hear it. I know the compressor's pumping something but the first thing I want to do now is to attach gauges to it and see what my pressures are. My pressure should be what? 34, Zero to 10. Our, pre our pressure is going to be uh, 15 degrees. Zero PSI on the low side. And the high side is going to be about 125 PSI. <coughs> Those are the pressures we're going to look for. Okay, so the next step is to add gauges to the system and check the system pressures because we visually inspected everything we can inspect that creates cooling. 
everything else in the refrigerator, and we haven't really even talked about this one yet. This one is a lot more fancy with the computer board and thermistors and everything else, but it has the same basic components as the refrigerator has. It has a compressor, a condenser, fan, and evaporator fan. I'm gonna check this same exact refrigerator the same way we check this refrigerator out. Now we will go into this one throughout the week. I'm gonna leave these two here until we're done. But this is only the first part of like, when we approach a refrigerator, what do we look for? What do we do? Anybody have any questions? Because I'm, yes sir. The heat, the heat exchanger is like the discharge, right? Well, the heat exchanger, is this right here, mm -hmm. the suction line and the capillary the tube, mm -hmm. okay? The heat exchanger are the two lines together mm -hmm. and they're exchanging heat between each other, okay? Mm -hmm. That's really not important. I could have the two separate and still have cooling. Mm -hmm. The heat exchanger just makes for more efficient cooling. But if I took these two lines and ran them separately throughout the box, the refrigerator would still cool just fine. It does not affect how well it cools, just how efficient it cools. Well, what's efficient? Cost of energy to reaching the temperatures. That's all. So today, I just wanted to get into air circulation, what we look for, how we look for them on the box, Tomorrow we're going to go through air circulation on this one and then we're going to talk about the refrigeration tools tomorrow. We're going to put gauges to this and we're going to look and see what the gauge is saying and determine how we're going to go from there to service it. Okay? Carl?